this video, we're going to talk about the absolute value function. I want you to imagine yourself starting at zero on a number line. You're going to walk back and forth on that number line, and your position is either going to be a positive position or a negative position. However, the distance you have moved from zero is always a positive number. For example, when you're standing at negative six, you have moved a distance of six from zero. And when you're standing at positive eight, you've moved a distance of positive eight from zero. The distance is always positive. The absolute value function gives us a way to measure distance in reference to position. So we have position on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. So for example, that position distance of 8, 8 is plotted on the absolute value graph, and that position distance of negative 6, 6 is also plotted on the absolute value graph. The graph itself is a perfect V shape with two diagonals. It, the apex of the V is at 0, 0, and it extends out as a perfect diagonal to the right and a perfect diagonal to the left. We write the absolute value function as y equals vertical line x vertical line, or f of x equals vertical line x vertical line. And we can define absolute value of x, that is vertical line x vertical line, as the distance x is from zero on a number line. Practically speaking, that means when we evaluate absolute value of x, the result is never negative, which makes it really useful for a lot of scientific and statistical calculations. To see if you understand that concept, why don't you go ahead and pause this video and try evaluating the expressions listed below. Absolute value of negative two, absolute value of 23, absolute value of zero, negative absolute value of negative five, negative absolute value of 0 0.02, and absolute value of the quantity 2 minus 7. Come back when you've given those a try. All right, let's see how you did. The absolute value of negative 2 would be the distance between 0 and negative 2, which would be positive 2. The absolute value of 23 would be the distance between 0 and 23, which is 23. The absolute value of 0 is the distance between 0 and 0, which is 0. So be careful, because it's not that the absolute value always comes out positive. It comes out 0 or positive, and so you could say it's just non-negative. Now, if we're looking at negative absolute value of negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5 part comes out to be positive 5, but the negative sign is still there in front. And so negative absolute value of negative 5 is actually just negative 5. Negative absolute value of 0 0.02, the 0 0.02 part comes out 0 0.02, but the negative was there from what happened in front, which is why our result is negative 0 0.02. And finally, the absolute value of the quantity 2 minus 7. Absolute value signs actually act as a form of parentheses. So we need to start by doing what's inside of them first. So we start by doing 2 minus 7. That gives us absolute value of negative 5, and then the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Now, if you were unsure about any of those, you can move over to Desmos and evaluate any of these with Desmos. There is a button on the first keyboard that pops up in Desmos with absolute value of A on it, and you can use that to evaluate expressions. For example, we can do absolute value of 2 minus 7, and you'll see that that comes out to be positive 5, just like we said. Well, since we've been talking about domain and range, it only makes sense that we would now look at the domain and range for an absolute value function. The domain of f of x equals absolute value of x is all real numbers. In other words, we can put in any real number to an absolute value function, and as an interval, we would write that domain as negative infinity to infinity. The range of f of x equals absolute value of x is non-negative real numbers, in other words, 0 or greater. So we could say f of x is greater than or equal to 0, or in interval notation, we could say the range is left bracket 0, comma infinity, right parentheses. Now, whenever you graph a function involving an absolute value, you're going to want to pay attention to where the point of the v sits. Even if you don't see the v when you first graph it, it's going to be there lurking somewhere just out of your viewing window. So if you see absolute value in your function, go and look for where the point of the v is. Now I've got an exercise for you. I've drawn two graphs on the screen, and I want you to write the domain and range in interval notation for each of the absolute value functions you see. I also want you to practice writing where each function is increasing and decreasing. And remember, we use x intervals for that. So go ahead and pause this video, give it a try, and come back when you're finished. Okay, we're back. 
Let me start by describing the graph of g of x. g of x is a v-shaped graph that decreases to the point 3 comma 2 and then increases from there. So it's v-shaped with its apex at 3 comma 2. Now this function is continuing on in both directions. So the domain for this function is just going to be all real numbers for x or parentheses negative infinity comma infinity parentheses. I'm going to highlight that on the x-axis so you can see that is just all of the possible values of x. The range on the other hand can only go down to a y value of 2. From that y value of 2 it can increase forever. So the range is from left bracket 2 comma to infinity parentheses. Now I'm going to erase the yellow and green on my graph so that I can talk about increasing and decreasing. Remember when we talk about increasing and decreasing intervals we're talking about the x values where the graph is increasing or decreasing. I'm going to start by highlighting the x values where the y values are increasing. That's from 3 going onward to the right. We're increasing from parentheses 3 to comma infinity parentheses. Remember that at 3 we are neither increasing or decreasing. We're kind of at a tipping point between them. The graph is decreasing from an x value of 3 going backwards all the way to the left end of the horizontal axis. If we think about that as an interval we're starting on the left end which is parentheses negative infinity and we're ending at the x value of 3 with the right parentheses on it. This can be a little tricky because the domain is in terms of x the range is in terms of y, and increasing and decreasing are both in terms of x. So the only time we deviate from these x intervals is when we talk about the range. In the graph of h of x, we have an absolute value function that's upside down. In other words, it looks like an upside down v. The apex of the upside down v is at the point 6 comma 10. So the graph increases to the point 6 comma 10 and decreases after that in straight lines. Let's start with the domain. Because the graph continues in both directions and never has any breaks in the graph, the domain is all real numbers on the x-axis. We write that as negative infinity comma infinity with parentheses on both sides of that. The range is everything up to the apex of that graph, which is at y equals 10. So it's at y equals 10 going down, 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 all the way down to negative infinity on the y-axis. Our range from least to greatest, and remember that's the y values, the range is from negative infinity with the parentheses up to a y value of 10 with a bracket on 10 because we can reach 10 as part of our range. Now let's take a look at the intervals on the x-axis where the graph is increasing and decreasing. Let's start with increasing. The graph is increasing up to the apex and that's from as far down on the x-axis as we can get, negative infinity, all the way up to an x value of 6. So that's increasing from negative infinity with the parentheses on it to 6 with the parentheses on it. And that's because increasing and decreasing doesn't apply to that apex. It's neither increasing nor decreasing. Now we'll talk about decreasing. The graph decreases from the apex, so starting at the x value of 6, going as far as we can in the right-hand direction, so going to infinity. We write that as parentheses 6, comma, infinity, and then we close it with the parentheses. To recap, I'll just remind you that absolute value graphs are always a V. It's a very common mistake for a student to draw a straight line when they have an absolute value graph simply because they haven't zoomed out to see where the V actually happens. Make sure you do that if you're graphing an absolute value function.